The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. Felix, I see some circuit boards laying here. The Pocket Beagle I'd recognize, but what's this thing? That is the Pocket Beagle with a Bella Mini attached. Bella Mini, what does that do? It's a ultra low latency audio sampling and uh, sensor kit. Oh, okay. So it can do things itself that the Pocket Beagle might not be super good at in real time. Right, yeah. Like audio. Mm -hmm. And it also comes with a uh, real time uh, operating system. Oh, so it's own operating system for the Pocket Beagle. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's pretty cool. So are you going to build something with it? Yeah, you know, I'm thinking I'll make a uh, drum sequencer. Oh, okay, that sounds pretty cool. Well, you're the musician around here, and I have some other projects to work on, so you think you can take this one yourself? Yeah, I sure can. Good luck! You will get some work done. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired designs. Imhotep's priests. Regrettable acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So we've got the Bella Mini. It's already soldered onto the Pocket Beagle. So I'm gonna draw up a design for this drum machine. I talked with my good buddy who is a uh, electronic musician of the highest caliber, and he gave me some tips on what would be optimal for a um, drum machine. And I'm gonna try and recreate that. Let's see here. Um, let's start with the sequencer. We're gonna have uh, 16 steps. First I was thinking of having eight steps, but um, my buddy, he said uh, eight steps is gonna be too short. Musically it would be excessively repetitive. So in the usual, uh, a typical measure would be 16 steps. So we'll have four groups of four. So we have our 16 steps in the sequencer. And they'll be down at the bottom here, so. We have our 4, 8, 12, and then 16. And these will be just uh, momentary buttons, and then we'll probably have like lights next to them. Maybe, maybe two LEDs, one red and one green, possibly. I'm not sure exactly. That's going to be a lot, so maybe not so many, but we could use a um, LED driver IC if necessary. So it'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, there's our 16-step drum sequence. We'll have uh, a typical drum kit is a, you have the kick. Let's see, here's, there's usually like six sounds. There's a kick, snare, hi-hat, crash, and then two toms. Tom one, tom two. And then something that could be pretty cool is if we had a um, rotary encoder next to that. Um, possibly maybe two rotary encoders. One um, giving an accent, and then the other selecting a different bank. I'm thinking five different banks of drum kits. Uh, this could be the bank select. Maybe some LEDs around that possibly. What else we need? Oh yeah, we need volume, a master volume, tempo, and maybe pitch. So those would be three knobs, either rotary encoders or uh, potentiometers. So also we'll have, we'll need start, stop, and record. Start, stop, record. I'm sure we could get into a few other things, but this would be um, a good start here. Well, we'll see as, uh, as we go on with the build. Okay, so um, I've been exploring the uh, Bella IO um, web-based IDE here. It seems pretty cool. Uh, so we've got our project explorer where we can create it. We have, it has a list of whatever projects we've got, and then we can create new projects, manage our projects. I'm going to get started on this, uh, this digital input example. Basically all I'm going to do is solder some buttons on here and maybe some LEDs because this, let me read this, this is, uh, uh, this example brings together digital input and digital output. The program will read a button and turn on, on and off an LED. So that's an element that we're going to need in this drum machine. So okay, I'm going to get started soldering a couple buttons, a couple of LEDs, and then I'll uh, Maybe make a header so I can just plug it in there. Yeah, see about see if I can do that. Okay, well, I've gone through this simple little program here. Basically, test the digital input output and the audio at the same time. So I had to switch to P201 and P202. P201 for the input and then P202 for the output. 
then I adjust that here just as a digital read and a digital write. It writes what it reads into the output. So we just click this here, run button. It'll compile it and it's running. Now uh, you hear a little fuzz, let me turn the sound up. The sound is up, um, this LED is illuminated. Oop. So here in the code, it, uh, it reads pin one and then it puts the value of pin one to pin uh, two and then also on the, P, on the P2 header, and then it, and then it also creates a, um, just a random noise, it has a random noise generator on there, and then it'll write the audio out. So when I release the button, there you go. Okay, so we have Astrid Bin, uh, one of the developers of the Bella and the Bella Mini. Um, I, did, I did a little sketch, so I'm basically thinking 16 sequence drum machine there, and then have uh, was it volume, tempo, and pitch, kick, snare, hi hat, crash, tom, tom, uh, tom one, and tom two, and then a bank selector. Um, okay. So I'm looking at that's going to be quite a bit of I/O, and the uh, the Bella you have 16 digital I/O. You're looking at having other add-ons like a, um, a digital I/O expander or something like that. Um, well, for digital I/O, you can always use like a multiplexer for like a shift register, for example. Um, with our Original board, we have um, an, an analog I.O. expander multiplexer capelet, which is um, expands your eight 16-bit analog I.O. into 64. Uh, the sampling rate isn't as fast, but that isn't available for the Bella Mini, but it is available for the original Bella. Yeah, that's pretty cool. What hardware, what, what is on the board here? On the board, do you mean the Mini? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, what's, has, yeah, and what's the difference between the Mini and the, the first version? The original Bella is a bit bigger, and it has the uh, ADCs for the analog in, and the it also has eight analog out. The eight analog out we did put on the Bella Mini because people were mostly using the analog in, and that's what everybody wanted. Lots of people still use the analog outs, and so that's available on our larger board. The other thing, but both are are like both boards have sixteen bit. Um, analog ins, but one has 16-bit analog out, the larger one. The larger board also has onboard speaker amps. We had to take those off to make it smaller, but uh, you can always make your own amplifier. But the large one had speaker amps, which is great because you could power it from a, a mobile phone battery and just line straight out into speakers. Uh, for this, uh, for the mini, you can line out into, into you know, kind of an amp or a PA, but uh, for standalone speakers, you'll need amplifier for that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, oh yeah, oh, oh, the piezos, you mentioned the piezos. So um, yeah. the, the other day you said, hey, uh, we should do something with the piezos. Um, could you go into a little, little detail about what you think would be a good example with the piezos and how to maybe possibly implement that into this uh, sequencer that I'm trying to build? Yeah, I, I, I like that you're making a sequencer. And what I really like about do, like doing with um, sequencers and things that are really about like button pressing is build some physical interaction to the actual sequencer. So if you put a piezo disc under a piece of foam, for example, on the front, then you can use that as like a drum pad where you could, you know, put in your and attach that to a sample and have that, you know, as a, as a physical thing that you do that's away from buttons, for example, or, or potentiometers but is, um, you know, some sort of physical interaction. I, I just think that's kind of cool. I'll try and uh, set up an example of that and see if I can put it into the, the design. I think uh, you've clarified the majority of my, hey, what is Bella questions. Um, and I got an idea of how to go about doing this or getting into it. Um, anything else that you want to add? I look forward to seeing what you guys do next. Okay, so I sandwiched a uh, piezo between these pieces of funky foam, and now I need to get them connected to Bella. And uh, I'm going to draw a schematic to make sure I'm doing this right. So I'm following some instructions in this uh, uh, example here in the IDE. So it says 1.8 mega ohm resistor. The closest I got is 2 mega ohms. Hopefully that'll be fine. And it's going to go between the red and the black wire. Okay, there's a. Uh, uh, eight mega ohm, mega. 
All right, and then also connect the negative side to ground. I'll just call this one negative, this is positive, so connect it to ground. Then connect the analog to input zero. Connect analog input zero to the positive side, okay. Connect another 1.8 mega ohm resistor to the positive side between positive and a 3.3 mega or 3.3 volts. So 3.3 volts, 1.8 mega ohm. So okay, this seems pretty simple. So this is a piezo that was in some other project a long time ago. Ground. Oh, it's already labeled. Ground. Fun. Okay. Ground. Let's put these here. I'm gonna put two mega ohm because that's what I got between them. I need three volts, so... Oh, I need another mega ohm. Another two mega ohms, that is. So there's my mega ohms. There's my voltage divider here. This is gonna go to the 3.3 volts. And then get the ground hooked up. Mm, there's ground right over here. All right, now I'm gonna have a signal. A0. A0 is gonna be right there. Let's see if I can... Go into there, come all the way over here, plug into there, okay, okay. All right, so I've got this example project loaded up. It's the sample piezo trigger. Let's take a look at the code here, number channels one. Got a lot of information right here, let's scroll down. I've noticed that in most of these tutorials here down at the bottom, they have a little bit of a description on what you do here. So it says what you connect, how you connect it, that's pretty cool. And then it says uh, what will happen. Let, let me try and turn, I wanna turn on the, uh, Oscilloscope. Let's see if I can find that. Cool. There's the oscilloscope. All right. Uh, I'll try and get this. Oh, it made a sound there. Let's we'll see if the oscilloscope is running. Okay. Oh, look at that. Woo! Look, he's doing something. Oh. Oh, okay. I'm clipping out these speakers. There's. Pretty cool. Woo, that's neat. Okay. Whoa! This is a pretty cool example here. Maybe, okay, yeah, the threshold, threshold to trigger. So this is basically, whenever the signal of the piezo is so high, it'll trigger a, uh, it sets off a trigger. Okay, now that I've figured out how to integrate a piezo, I figured out how to get a button to work, I figured out how to get the LEDs going, and trigger a uh, sound, I think next thing to do is maybe uh, hmm, make a matrix and so I can have button input to that. But also at the same time, I'm thinking maybe I should move on to some case design, at least the front plate, so I know where all the buttons are gonna be placed and the knobs and so on and so forth so that uh, when I create the matrix, uh, I can kind of make them, kind of make it so that it fits the enclosure. I think I'll move on to that now. In this time lapse, I am building the controller board to drive a TOT5361 BX common anode three digit numeric display. The display consists of three seven segment LED elements configured in the matrix. Three leads are connected to the anodes of three groups of eight diodes for each element. Eight leads are connected to the cathodes of the diode elements. To drive the numeric display, I'm connecting two 748C595D output shift registers through NPN and PNP transistors. The PNP transistors are connected on the anode side of the numeric display elements. The PNP transistors are connected to the cathode side of the numeric display elements. On the anode side, the base of the PNP transistors are connected to three outputs of a 74HC595D shift register, with the remaining outputs of the shift register not connected to anything. The emitters of the PNP transistors are connected to 3.3 volts. To connect the anode side drive connections of the numeric display, the collectors of the PNP transistors are connected to pins 12, 9, and 8. These are the anode side connections of the LED elements in the display. 
On the cathode side, the base of the eight NPN transistors are connected to the outputs of a second 74HC595B shift register. This uses all the outputs of the shift register. The collectors of the NPN transistor are connected to the remaining pins of the numeric display with a current limiting resistor between them. The emitters of the NPN resistors are connected to ground. The shift registers are daisy chained together. For the anode side connections to be active, the shift register needs to output a low. For the cathode side to be active, the shift register needs to output a high. At this point, I'm focusing on the light emitting diodes and switches, which I have screwed and hot glued to the interface. Each lead of the LEDs will require a wire to connect it to the LED matrix driver board. The output matrix driver board is very similar to the board for the three digit numeric display. The main difference is that all the outputs of the shift registers are used. This provides enough output to drive all the LEDs. Additionally, one row of the outputs is being used to drive the rows of the input matrix. The input matrix, which stacks on top of the output matrix, is another interesting creation. This board is a button matrix that will be scanned and read through the 74HC165 8-bit parallel input shift register. Felix, what is this thing? This is my homebrew drum sequencer. Oh yeah, using the Bella I.O. board that attaches to the Pocket Beagle. Yeah, um, it's got a really awesome operating system. Really, it's a real-time operating system that's custom made just by the Bella team. Oh, um, that makes sense. Yeah, but I, I've spent quite a bit of time um, designing the input and output matrix for driving the LEDs. Because you have a lot more buttons than you do I.O. Mm -hmm. on the Pocket Beagle. Yeah. Oh yeah, you have like shift registers, right? And you do yep. it with the Spy Bus? Yeah, shift registers. That's pretty spy. cool. Um, I had to work with the uh, Bella team to get the uh, Spy working. Because they, in this, in this custom uh, operating system, they didn't have the Spy working yet. Oh yeah, you were thinking about doing software Spy, but that probably wouldn't work fast enough for mm -hmm. your matrixing. Yeah, so um, I finally got the, uh, the matrix all wired together. And I got everything, actually I got everything wired. Um, it was quite a bit wiring all this. Yeah, this looks like one of the most complex things you've ever wired, actually. Yeah, actually, it was, it was pretty tough, but it was a lot of fun, too. Yeah, um, kind of reminds me of an old, old radio or something. <laughs> it's more like a new sequencer. So what are the next steps? Um, so next thing I can do, if I finally got the spy communication okay. like working pretty solid. What frequency is the spy bus running at? Geez, I don't know. Uh, it's in the code somewhere. All right. I, I should be able to tell you that, but I... I well, because we talked code. about you know making sure the lights are persistent, so you mm -hmm. have to be... Uh, you know, at least 100 hertz, and then if you have an 8x matrix, then you have to be eight times faster than that. Mm -hmm. That that way, our eyes can't see the flicker. That's a good rule of thumb. All right, that sounds yeah. good. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. Um, so basically, now that I got the um, spy, are these drum pads? Yeah. The piezo. Yeah, there's piezos under there. Oh. I have um, analog reading here. These are rotary encoders, right? Mm -hmm. um, they feel these nice. two are analog. Mm -hmm. But then these four are rotary. Oh, okay. So these are potentiometers. Yep. Cool. And then this is actually has an additional button on it. And these are all on your switch and light matrix. Yep. Are there speakers here? Or what yeah, is that? there's two speakers. There's an amplifier in there as well. So this is one self-contained unit. Mm -hmm. And you even have an AC power input, it looks like? Yep. Everything is inside of it. So what are the next steps? So now that I've got all that working, I need to really get into the Bella programming because mm -hmm. they have all these awesome, really really great example codes on how to manipulate audio and stuff. So the, uh, the hardware is one thing and the software is entirely yep, another. It's, it's a whole another adventure. Will you have time to finish that before the show's over? I don't know, but you know, we've talked about uh, proceeding into Pseudo Sergeant. Oh, with, uh, finishing this well I guess this makes Sergeant. sense since this yeah. runs Linux. Mm -hmm. Real-time Linux, huh? Yeah. All right, well this thing looks pretty cool. I look forward to the future to see if you get it fully working and then you, may, you can become a super DJ. Oh yeah. Have you ever built anything with the Pocket Beagle or the Beagle Bone Black? Have you built any audio instruments out of electronics? 
And do you want to keep up on the build? If so, please visit element14.com forward slash TBHS or element14.com forward slash pseudosargent. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events, even after the Ben Heck Show is over. We'll see you next time. Well, hi there. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, uh, anyway, you know about the Clampets? Oh, hi. Just kidding. Felix, the Raspberry Pi No HDMI project went over really well. A lot of people have asked me, where can I get one of those? And I'm like, um, well, you gotta make it. So I was thinking in today's episode, what if we took this and turned it into an all-in-one PCB? So instead of having to do all that soldering, people could just buy the board, they attach the screen, an A+, and a battery, and boom, they pretty much have this, but without any of the annoying soldering.